The universe is abundant in mystery and discovery. It holds the past, present, and future all in one because everything in the universe is moving all at once. This presentation, folks, is going to be quite special because after you finish watching or listening to this message, the concept presented, even if this is your first time hearing about this, you will start to see and hear the term more often in your existence. How many of you have ever seen a squirrel bury a tree nut? They do this for a couple of reasons. To store food for later and to crack open the nut. Because the nut absorbs the water in the ground, swells up and splits open. Now how many of you have ever seen a squirrel showing another squirrel how to do that? A human can't teach a squirrel how to do that. So how does a squirrel know how to do it? How do squirrels around the world know how to do this same behavior? You see, there are many things in our world that we just accept and don't really take the time to think about how some things are possible. Now, some people would dismiss the squirrel's behavior as genetic, and that may be part of it. But scientists who study squirrel behavior themselves cannot fully explain how squirrels know how to do this. Genetics may play a role, but there is something much more to it. How do we know? Because of chemicals. If you take a chemical compound right now and you crystallize that chemical, it takes a certain method and a length of time to crystallize certain chemicals with a certain pattern of crystallization. But when you create a new chemical, it's very hard to crystallize that chemical. It takes some time. Eventually, you are able to crystallize it. And once you do, from that point on, that chemical will now be easy to crystallize for anyone, anywhere in the world where that chemical exists. You see that one person crystallizing that chemical changed the way that chemical crystallizes forever. That chemical is no longer hard to crystallize. How did that happen? Well, the answer may be what's called morphic resonance. Morphic resonance is a process whereby self-organizing systems inherit a memory from previous similar systems. In its most general formulation, morphic resonance means that the so-called laws of nature are more like habits. The hypothesis of morphic resonance also leads to a radically new interpretation of memory storage in the brain and of biological inheritance. Memory need not be stored in material traces inside brains, which are more like TV receivers than video recorders, tuning into influences from the past. And biological inheritance need not all be coded in the genes or in epigenetic modifications of the genes. Much of it depends on morphic resonance from previous members of the species. Thus, each individual inherits a collective memory from past members of the species and also contributes to the collective memory affecting other members of the species in the future. Morphic resonance is a hypothesis or theory developed by English author, biologist, and parapsychology researcher Alfred Rupert Sheldrake. And that one paragraph I just read puts a lot of other things into perspective now, doesn't it? You hear it all the time. 
people having memories or dreams of a past life, right? Maybe Sheldrake has got something here. We've been living with certain dogmas our whole lives, folks. What is instinct? We know it exists. We know animals and people have it. But what is it? Anybody ever explain it to you? You have to think about it. Animals are all pretty good at being animals. How does a flock of birds know how to stay in unison when flying around? How does a school of fish know how to stay in unison? Well, let's go slow because there is a growing amount of content on this. And so I just want to give you guys the main ideas here because there is quite a bit to this and there is a lot to unpack. Now, you may find this to be a bit chilly, but they have experimented on cells before where they have cultured cells from something like hamsters and have attempted to grow them while exposed to a poison or known toxin. Of course, on the first try, all the cells died. But after a few rounds and a few modifications, a small group survived. And with each attempt after that, the cells would have no problem surviving the toxin. The same thing happened when they changed the temperature the cultures were grown in. The cells all died at a raised temperature, but after more attempts, eventually a group of cells survived the higher temperature, and then after that, they were able to culture the cells at that temperature regularly. And this was an experiment with generations of hamsters, you see? So those characteristics would be passed on to the next generation of hamsters. Within the concept of morphic resonance, there are what are called morphic fields or morphogenic fields or form-shaping fields, meaning the developing cells, tissues, organs, and organisms are shaped by these fields. So within the morphic fields is where the magic happens, which seems to affect all other organisms of the same kind outside of the field. Animals that migrate tend to follow the same patterns of previous generations quite naturally. This does affect humans, by the way. Do you know how many inventions that people think were invented by one person were actually invented by several people without them having knowledge of each other. How many of you are familiar with the phenomena of the sense of being stared at? All of us, right? At some point or another. How do you know when you are being stared at? Also, how do you know when someone is going to call you? Right before they call. I'm not saying that this is morphic resonance, but it is a term we could use to make sense out of a lot of phenomena we encounter, but can't really explain. Telepathy in connection with telephone calls, text messages, and emails. Telepathy in connection with telephone calls is the commonest kind of apparent telepathy in the modern world. It usually occurs between people who have strong bonds or emotional connections with each other, such as parents and children, husbands and wives, and good friends. An experimental test in which subjects had to identify who out of four callers was calling, the average scores were very significantly above the 25% hit rate expected by chance. The callers were selected at random, and the subjects made their guesses before answering the call. These positive results were replicated independently at the universities of Amsterdam, Holland, and, and Freiburg, Germany. Similar telepathic phenomena seem occur in connection with emails and SMS messages. So if you have ever wondered if an experiment was done to test telephone telepathy, there you are. And this is the same type of phenomena that occurs when people think of someone and then runs into that person shortly after. Conclusions As this discussion shows, the most frequent types of apparent telepathy in the modern world occur in connection with telephone calls 
and with other technological forms of communication like emails and SMS messages. The development of these technologies has led to a great increase in the ease and frequency with which people communicate at a distance and, as a byproduct, has produced many more opportunities for telepathic influences. In order to telephone someone or send her a text message or email, it is necessary first to have the intention to do so and then to think about that person while dialing her or writing her a message. These thoughts and intentions directed towards the person may then be picked up and cause that person to start thinking about the sender or enable that person to feel whom a call is from when the phone starts ringing. Many of you have an understanding of what is called the Akashic Records, right? Information that is stored in the ether of space-time and we all have access to this information. Isn't that what we are talking about when we talk about memories being stored outside the body? Now they have already proven that when you teach something like a primate to do something new, every primate of the same kind around the world will learn that same skill easier from that point on. And people are wondering who's teaching these monkeys new tricks. I mean, the evidence to support this is pretty consistent, but of course, mainstream science doesn't want to touch it. For those of you who own pets, here's something you may find interesting. Dogs that know when their owners are coming home and other unexplained powers of animals. Many pet owners will swear that their dog or cat or other animal has exhibited some kind of behavior that they can't explain. How does a dog know when its owner is returning home at an unexpected time? How do cats know when it is time to go to the vet, even before the cat carrier comes out? How do horses find their way back to the stable over completely unfamiliar terrain? And how can some pets predict that their owners are about to have an epileptic fit? See folks, we all think about these things and I think having a better understanding or concept of these things will help us to better understand how the world works. You see folks, genetics can explain why you are a human, but genetics cannot explain why you are shaped like a human or have a human form. So many biologists adopted the concept of morphogenesis and morphogenic fields to help explain how organisms take form. The idea here is that these fields contain the memory or information that has been developed over time habitually. And nature is doing things out of habit. I guess we could call that cycles. And there does seem to be a pattern of how things take shape, especially when you study plants and animals. This is powerful information. We've all known that there was something there that was connecting us, causing all types of psychic phenomena. Our connections with animals and animals with each other, connections with others, connections with the memories of our ancestors, habits, abilities, and skills that we have, but can't really explain where they come from. What's really interesting about morphic fields is how they are structured on memory of what happened before. This may explain why when people die in a violent manner, some people believe that there is this negative energy left behind in the space, which makes the event more likely to occur again in the same place. Think about a particular corner of a street that always has accidents, or there is always a shooting or there is some type of repeat pattern, right? These are things we've all thought about and found strange, but never really had an explanation for. And Sheldrake has just given it a name based on an idea that already existed. Morphic resonance, no matter what you call it, it is the cumulative force that organizes formation. We are going to come back to this as, of course, there is so much to it. And there is enough information on the subject to keep you guys busy for a while. 
That's all for now, and there is more to come very soon, so stay tuned. We've become so defensive and closed off from each other. There is no wonder why we can't stay connected. I hope everyone is having a wonderful holiday break and day. And until next time, friends, take care of each other. And as always, stay awake, stay aware, stay safe. And I'll talk to you all soon.